Hi everybody, this is Lainey at Hilltop Home Place. I thought I'd better give you a little update just to let you know what I've been doing around my property. Got a lot going on. I got some issues with squirrels that have cost me a lot of money and that I'm just trying to deal with. And then of course, like a lot of other people, I'm the mother to a bunch of seedlings <laughs> and they take a lot of babysitting and a lot of time and I'm getting them ready right now. I'm hardening them off and I'm getting ready to start putting them in the ground here shortly. This back porch that I built has been a wonderful little place to harden off my plants. I have a few more inside on windowsills, but other than that, I've put them all out here. I've been doing this for over a week now, and I'm hoping that it's made them strong enough to where they can go out. We had what I think is our last cold danger zone last night. We got down to almost freezing or right at freezing for a few hours. And I think that's about it. Tomorrow morning, it's gonna be a low of like 43. And then it's supposed to kind of start warming back up. It's been said by our weathermen that that's the last danger. Now, who knows, whoever knows, but I think I'm gonna go ahead tomorrow on Wednesday, March 20th and plant some of my tomato plants. Knowing that I'm fixing to need my garden space to put out my seedlings, I've kind of been focusing on that, but it's also made it where I've dropped the ball on some of my other bigger projects I was working on. Let me show you a little bit about that. Coming down my back porch, of course I've got my steps built. I have not put the railings on them yet. I've got some of my stepping stones set down at the bottom to make an, an easy transition onto my limestone. But the limestone is where I'm coming up short right now. There's actually limestone all out there. It's just the glare makes it look white. Uh, my neighbor came over with his tractor and he took down the big pile. I had a huge pile here of limestone. It was up against this electric pole, which I didn't like. It went way up, you know, like a big eight yard dump pile that they had made of limestone. And he went ahead as best he could and kind of raked it out for me with his bucket and everything. We It's a situation where it's very hard. There's only a few feet here between this post and the edge of my steps and everything. So that was hard for him. And then where my wheelbarrow is there, if you see the little white spot in front of it, that's kind of why I've got my wheelbarrow there to mark that because that's another sewer uh, tank or whatever. I, I think it's a clean out line, but you can't run over it with your tractor. <laughs> and also my whole sewer system is back there where all those other things stick out of the ground. So it was very hard for him to maneuver around here, but he did pull my pile down and kind of raked it to where I told him kind of the general area I wanted everything. But I still have a lot of um, extra. I've got a lot of extra. I've actually got uh, two or three more stones that I'm gonna come out with here. And so I need to rake some of this away and kind of get it ready to make my steps come on down. And then I just have a lot of little piles a lot of little spoils is what I'm going to call it, that I've got to load into my wheelbarrow and just take to different places I need it around my property. I'm going to fill some holes in my driveway. And I never did get big loads of limestone to do me a complete new driveway. And I don't think I am <laughs> based on what this cost. But I can use some of this to fill holes in my driveway and take that up. You see how it's kind of climbing all up there? I need to bring all that down put little loads into my wheelbarrow and take it all over my property. Um, it's gonna be a job, but I'm gonna get it done. I just haven't prioritized it in the last few days. I put some up in here. It's kind of made like a little courtyard. This was kind of an ugly area, which is why I made that little container garden there out of some scraps I found under my shed. It's just trying to make this area look a little better. I've got some allium flowers that are supposed to be uh, coming up out of that. Well, they're coming up now, but hopefully they'll grow this summer and make big lavender blooms there and make that look pretty. But this area, I was trying to just neaten up. So I put more limestone in the middle and more limestone along our carport. What you see there and there is the concrete little pads that were for the previous trailer that was here we didn't need those concrete pads because our trailer wasn't as big as theirs but i use them to walk on it's actually where water comes down water drains downhill and comes this way so i'm leaving those pads there for that reason easier maybe to see from this angle looking back on it the little spoil piles that i have and all the smoothing out i have to do 
But in the end, when I get it done, I'm gonna be so happy. My main goal was just to make it to where when you step off of my carport area, you're stepping on to some limestone and then you have a path to walk on limestone back to my porch steps and go up and you're not walking in mud. I've never really used our back doors before because we didn't have a porch that was reliable or, or felt safe. I now have the porch, I have the steps. Yes, I do have to build the railings and I will. I'm gonna build those here shortly. I've got all the supplies, I just have to get it done. And, um, and then you'll be able to walk on limestone without getting mud all up in your tennis shoes and everything. And I'm gonna keep that back door open a lot this summer and use it a lot more than I ever did before. Like a lot of other people, I've got cilantro going crazy right now. I cut it and I bring some inside to dry it and it just keeps growing back. <laughs> I've never grown cilantro before, so I had no idea how prolific it was but um, it seems to like it here and it's doing good. And I'm gonna try to you know, save as much as I can, give some to my daughter and things like that. So use it to cook with, I guess. And in my sugar kettle, I've actually got carrots growing good. I'm not one that can grow carrots very well. It's so hot down here and everything, but um, I decided to put them in the sugar kettle and they seem to like it. I just put purchased like miracle Grow soil in there and stuff and it's, easy I think for them to push down some roots into so hopefully I'll be getting some carrots here in the next couple of months but my biggest problem has been squirrels squirrel squirrel squirrels this is where I'm planning on planting a bunch of tomatoes this year I want them closer to the house I want to be able to come out here very easily look for hornworms and do some things and trimming and stuff and I'm gonna put them close to the house however I'm going to have to put chicken wire along here. <laughs> I've got all these posts ready to go. I've already sunk money and purchased some chicken wire and I've used it in some other spots, but I've got two more rolls of 150 foot each coming tomorrow from Home Depot because I found it at a good price online and um, I ordered more. It's gonna make it aggravating to take care of these tomatoes. I'd love to just be able to walk up to them and do what I need to do. But y'all, that's not just gonna happen. It's just not. Um, the squirrels are attacking everything. Most of my squirrels live in these trees, but they're everywhere. They're everywhere. They're not just on my property. They're all out in those woods there. <laughs> they're behind my house. They are everywhere. And here's another bed. I've got corn planted in. It hadn't come up yet, but I had to put this around my corn. I rode this up. The very next morning I came out here, I didn't even have anything planted yet. I rode it up, I came out here, the squirrels had dug all in it. So I said, nope, I'm just not having it this year. I, for some reason they didn't do this last year, but they're doing it this year and it's already begun and I haven't even hardly got anything growing yet. I'm fixing to tell you the horror story in just a second. You'll see these are rows, but actually my corn is planted in the furrows in the middle. So I use the extra dirt there is what I'm gonna to use to heal them up. I have them planted there too. So this will be uh, a different kind of corn. I actually did break down. I got on a website that I did use last year and I just liked it. And I checked it out the other day and they had some things I wanted to order, so I did. And one of the things I ordered was a corn called Lancaster Sure Crop. Now it's from the north, it's from Pennsylvania. I don't know if it's gonna grow good down here, but I'm gonna give it a try. I decided to plant it here and I've got plenty of seeds. If something happens with germination, I'll just reseed and reseed. But I had marked out this little patch in my front yard that I grew potatoes in last year and I grew some other little type of corn, little blue corn. Um, I marked it out this year for another single variety corn patch. And that's what I'm using for that Lancaster Sure Crop. I'm doing some land race corn where I mix some varieties. I'm doing that in another spot, but this patch is gonna be truly just the Lancaster Sure Crop if it comes up. I showed you on a video the other day, the little two minute video about spring, I showed you all my pretty potato plants. 
Now, when I filmed that the other day, <laughs> when I filmed these beautiful potato plants, there were big, tall potato plants here too. Very next morning, I walk out and they've been decimated. They actually have perked up what was left of them. What was left of them? Some big chunks of them were destroyed. But what was left of them has kind of perked up a little bit. I'm just leaving them alone and I'm hoping that they'll take roots and do what they need to do and still put off some potatoes for me. I'm hoping, you know, all of these are gonna put off a good amount of potatoes for me. What was heartbreaking though is for some reason, nothing was messing with these. I didn't have chicken wire on them. They were just sitting out here by themselves. Nothing was messing with them. But the squirrels had put their sights on my other patch. This patch up front has no chicken wire on it yet, but it's fixing to. This patch up front, I had a row here and a row here of nothing but potatoes. And they were coming up so good. They were bushing. They were doing just like those back there. They had just taken off, were growing well, were doing good. And the squirrels decided to decimate them. I would come out here every day and two or three more were dug up and gone. They were eating the seed potatoes. <laughs> they were chewing on the bottom part of the plants and just the plants would lay over. I told my friend, I said, they must not like the plants touching their backs while they're sitting there digging up my seed potatoes. So they knock the plants over and chew them and make them fall like a tree. And then they go after the seed potatoes. And one by one, y'all, they ate every one of them. Every one of them. So half the seed potatoes I had purchased were destroyed. It made me so upset. But for some reason, they weren't bothering those until they ate the last of these. And the very next morning, they attacked those. <laughs> and so I, I looked out my window and I saw the destruction the next morning and I was just like, no, I'm not gonna have it. I'm not gonna fight squirrels and lose all my crops. I know sometimes farmers have to do whatever they have to do when you have a big commercial operation. Something like frost or whatever takes out your crops, you have to replant. You can't just not replant. For a home gardener like myself, it's, <laughs> I'm just being stubborn because I could go to the store and buy potatoes and can them if I wanted to. I could go buy a five pound bag of potatoes for five or six dollars right now. I know I could do that, but I want homegrown potatoes. I want to grow my own potatoes. There's just nothing like tasting those fresh potatoes. They haven't been sitting in a bin somewhere for months and months. They haven't been chemically treated. They're just good potatoes and I love growing them. I like to let my grandkids come over and help me dig them and everything. I love them. And I'm like, I'm not gonna let a squirrel take that from me. And the thing is, I can't really even see how to eradicate the problem. Yes, I could shoot a few of them, but y'all, they're everywhere. Um, it's, it's just nature. And I actually like looking at the squirrel sometimes, so I'm not complaining about that. But it's just nature, and they're going to come back. When I look out my window when I'm washing dishes, there's squirrels everywhere. They're everywhere. <laughs> and so I could pop two or three of them, uh, but it's just going to be an ongoing problem. And it's not just squirrels. Yes, they decimated my seed potatoes. It wasn't my dogs. It was squirrels. I saw them. But I also have the issue of my dogs. Last year, my squirrels weren't doing anything to my crops that I knew of, but the dogs were eating everything. I've told you before, they were pulling peppers off of plants. They were pulling melons off of plants. They were up pulling up whole stalks of corn so that they could get to the cobs and everything. So I just have to, if I want to grow a garden, which I do, if I want to grow a garden, I just have to put up some stuff to protect it. And I've been spending more money than I want to spend right now. And I've been spending it on T-posts, on those white posts that I bought the other day. Thank goodness I bought those because those are half the price of a T-post. And I need both actually. The T-posts are too expensive to only use T-posts but the white ones aren't taut enough to run chicken wire around them without them kind of bending in. So the T-posts are good for corners and then the white posts I use in the middle part just to kind of keep it from whipping too much. <laughs>
a little hard to see there, but I had bought a box of landscaping staples to keep landscape fabric down. And um, I have a big old box of them. I don't know how many are in there, about 500, I think. And I'm using those to hold the bottom down just so the squirrels or the dogs can't nudge up under there and go on into these little garden areas. Of course, I'm using zip ties everywhere that I can. But you have to be able to get in here and do some maintenance. You have to be able to get in here and harvest and to row up your corn and everything. So what I did was on one end, I just have some wire here. This is actually the wire that was wrapped around the little bundles of T-posts from Tractor Supply. The zip ties you see are like the very first thing I put on the post. And then I went around, around the edge back there to this corner. And then when I came back, I didn't use zip ties. I used these little pieces of wire and they're just in there like bread wrappers. They're holding the chicken wire just temporarily so that I can undo those, pull it back and walk in there to do maintenance if I want to. I'm doing all this for squirrels, y'all. I'm doing all this for squirrels. <laughs> I'm just having to rig up things to where I can get to my own plants because of squirrels. I've protected them though. It's working. So that's why I'm going to keep doing it. They have not messed with one potato plant since I did this. And I'm getting ready right here to plant some cucumbers. But I can tell you, they're going to eat all the plants the minute I put them in there. I came out here yesterday and rowed this up again. They, they get into it every night. I rowed it up again, all pretty. I cleaned out the little drainage area here. I rowed up my wood chips. Everything looked beautiful. And if you can see... This is what happens every night. They get in here and they just play. I don't know what they're looking for. There's nothing planted in here right now, but they're looking for acorns or whatever, and they get in here and play. So you can see how they've done throwing all the dirt out here. Well, that's what they're doing with my plants when I plant them. They've got other spots here. <laughs> they just, they just digging. They're just digging. See, they've been all in this bed last night. They're probably trying to get in here to get to my potato plants, but they just can't make it. But if I'm going to have any cucumbers, I've got to do this. So when my tractor supply shipment comes of three foot chicken wire, which is how tall this is, I'm going to, I'm going to start at this corner, wrap to here, wrap all the way down, and then make me a little gate at that end so that I can get in and out and harvest. That's just the way it is. So this is one big area that's going to look like prison fence. My corn patch is going to look like prison fence. This former potato patch is going to look like that, which they also got into last night and dug a bunch of holes. I had raked it up real pretty yesterday evening as well, and they got in it last night. But I'm going to wrap it with three-foot chicken wire, and I believe that this row here is going to be a row of peppers. And I'm putting some of my shorter vine melon plants here, it's all winter squash and melons, things like that. I'm putting some of those here. I've got a whole lot of things that need to go out and it's been such, you know, it's, it's not terribly hard to start seedlings, but you baby them, you watch them, you watch them grow and you want them to have the best chance to succeed. And I just know this is their playground. This bed here seems to be the one they attack like crazy. And I just can't leave things in it. They're going to dig the plants up. The plants will be cast to the side. <laughs> And they're going to dig under them. Um, it's just what they do. They're squirrels. But I don't want to lose all my plants. I'm probably going to have to do something else around these. Because I'm going to have tomatoes and melon plants here as well. And um, I'm probably going to have to do a little, little more shoring of things up around here. What worries me is right here and right there, I was going to plant some... Aunt Molly's ground cherry plants. <laughs> I just think they're going to go crazy and try to eat those. So I'm probably going to have to put something around those too. I really don't have enough areas to where I can just say, oh, I'm going to move them somewhere else. I don't have that much room. Last year, I planted tomatillos and stuff here. They didn't bother them. But this year, for some reason, I have a feeling the minute those plants go in the ground, they're going to get dug up. Um, so I'm probably going to have to put some little round cage around here just to keep them out. This is what I call my big corn patch, even though I plant all kinds of things in it. I got out here the other day, sat in a chair, and spent a couple hours weeding. 
all of this part. The only thing you see green in there right now is clover. I just left some of the clover because it doesn't bother me. I, I kind of like having clover growing in different spots. The back part of it is my oats. I feed to the horse all the time. <laughs> I feed to the horse, but they just grow right back. Um, my neighbor is supposed to come till this for me with his disc and uh, on his tractor. And I'm gonna turn those oats in the soil here shortly. And um, I need to get that done. I need to contact him because um, it really and truly, it's about time to start planting a lot of this stuff here. Uh, it wasn't any big deal though, because we had two or three rainy days recently and I knew that he couldn't come down here and do it because of that. But probably in the next few days, I need to get him to come back down here. As I explained to you on my list for my March challenge, my on the March challenge, I've just been taking each bed and saying, you know, what does it need? Most of them needed weeding. They all needed to be cultivated and some soil brought in here. So that's what I've been doing. I put some black cow and some black velvet soil up in here. And um, I've got some little sweet marjorams planted and of course, I had to put some metal over the top of them because the squirrels ate the one that was right there. And they just dug it out of the ground. So I want the rest of the sweet marjoram to take off. So I had to cover it with some metal. I got my second bed done the same way. I've got it cultivated and I actually went ahead and put some zucchini seeds in here. And I think some rondonese uh, zucchinis and dragon's egg cucumbers I believe I've got two or three things up in here already I'm going to plant some lima beans along the poles and maybe some tomatoes on the back side um, I'm trying to work all that out right now I've got a lot of seedlings a lot of seedlings I've got to deal with this is my azalea branch row with my little azalea branch arbor that I built last year and I still love it so much it just adds so much to my yard. I just love it. This is going to hopefully be covered with a mixture of pole bean seeds, just some land race. I think this is where I'm planting my land race dry beans. I just mixed a lot of my dry bean pole bean seeds, and I'm going to just see what they do here this year. I'm going to see what they do. My friend gave me a bunch of iris rhizomes and bulbs and all the other day, and I planted those there and a couple of other spots in my yard. So hopefully I'll have some beautiful irises blooming at some point. And I've been working on like that flower bed out there, this bed, that bed. I call them all flower beds. They're really garden beds. And um, this one here at the end. And all of this will be planted here shortly with as many things as I can fit out here. This whole area will be covered with seedlings. This is my pollinator row <laughs> where I had my oats planted. And the oats have grown like crazy out here those back over there are like waist high but i've been bringing my clippers out here and harvesting a lot of this to give to the horse the horse loves it i really just wanted the the roots and all of the oats and the, the little stubble that's the main thing that i wanted to be turned under and put into the soil so when he comes to till my corn patch back there i'm going to ask him to please come over here with his uh, disc and just make one pass or two passes over this and kind of put these oats and all into the ground but in the meantime it looks kind of like balding spots because i'm over here harvesting to give to the horse and uh, she doesn't let me forget about it <laughs> but i tell you what if you do need a ground cover um i would recommend the oats they have just done wonderful it's kept my soil from being taken over by any kind of weeds or grass because we're in spring here in louisiana if you look around everything's turning green We've got azaleas blooming. Uh, it's still a little cool today. and We had that cool spell last night, but we're into spring weather kind of feeling. And so weeds and grass are already going crazy. And so having these oats here has kept my pollinator row kind of free of that. And then hopefully as soon as he discs it, I'm gonna come back through. I have a whole bag of miscellaneous um, wildflower type seeds. And as soon as he comes through with the disc, I'm going to come out here that day and go ahead and plant those flowers in here and keep them watered until they start um, germinating and coming up and everything. And hopefully I can kind of take this little row here, make it into a great pollinator row and um, take it from the grass 
and make it just where garden things grow in it. My last frontier here is my small corn patch, and this is what is the big mess. I'm literally hand weeding it right now. I've gotten three rows done this morning. I'm just going to keep going. It's tedious, it's aggravating, um, but this is the way I'm choosing to do it. It went from not having hardly any weeds during this whole winter to getting overrun by weeds in the last few weeks because of the spring-like weather. So a lot of this is, is just coming up and I want to do it by hand because I shake the dirt off as I do it. If I just take a hoe and go at it, I'm going to end up pulling a lot of dirt out of my garden and I don't really want to do that. As soon as I pull these weeds up, I shake the dirt off and try to get as much dirt to stay here as possible. I'm going to come out here in a little bit and plant my hikama seeds. I'm planting them in this first row and I did go ahead and weed the last row down there that you can't see but those are both where my hikama seeds are gonna go. And they have long vining plants. They did good here that last year though. I did harvest some and ate some, it, they were good. But they have long vining plants, so I'm putting them on the end so they can vine where they wanna go. I have another little field corn that I'm gonna put in these next few rows. And then uh, my garlic has got to sit here. It's probably not gonna be ready to pull out until May or June. I'm gonna do a little weeding around the garlic because I don't think garlic likes weeds and it didn't have any, but it has some now. So I need to get that weeded as well. I'm gonna pull out all of this old kale. I've kind of just left it there because to me, it's kind of busting up my soil by making its little tap roots. And second of all, it's shading the grass so that I don't have the weeds coming in. You can see I have weeds here, but I don't really have a lot of weeds around the kale because the kale has been there. But I'm gonna clean all this up in these last rows here and I've got some seven top turnip greens and some different things down here. Some red mustard greens. I'm going to pull all of this up, clean up these rows, clean up the weeds, and then from the garlic over, from the garlic this way is going to be my land race sweet corn. It was going to be my land race field corn and I was going to have sweet corn over there in my other corn patch. But I think what I'm going to have to do is make that corn patch over there be more of a melon patch towards the back for some of my melons because I just have a lot more seedlings than I thought. And I'm just going to do landrace sweet corn. And when I say landrace sweet corn, I just mean I'm mixing a lot of varieties. It's not a true landrace yet. This is the first year I'm going to use those seeds. But I'm mixing a lot of sweet corn varieties. I'm going to plant them all out here together. I'm not going to baby them a whole lot. I'm not going to worry about which variety is which so a whole lot. I'm just going to let them see which strongest survive. And then the strongest ones that survive, I'm going to try to save seeds from. And we can eat the rest or whatever. But I'm going to try to select a few plants to save seeds from. And uh, we're just going to see if we can kind of get a variety going that's just acclimated to my soil, acclimated to my climate up here and just see if I can get a land race variety going. I'm just gonna see. This first year, they'll all look like what they're supposed to look like. And I'm hoping I can get a lot of corn out of it. And I don't really care if it's white, yellow, bicolor, or what. As long as I get some corn, I'm happy. But if I do see some that are particularly doing well, I'm gonna save a few cobs, you know, and let them keep growing till they dry out. And I'm gonna save those seeds. And we're gonna see if next year we can plant them and over a couple of years, select from these ones that do good and try to get a variety that will just really, really grow good here. That's the goal. Well, y'all, I'm on my way to Tractor Supply to get a few more T-posts. I'm just going to get what I need to get. I'm going to do what I have to do. I want to be able to grow and garden. This is my therapy. This is what gives me a reason to come outside every day and do things. I'm not going to let some little squirrels beat me. <laughs> But I don't mind doing it. I'm going to do whatever I have to do. Uh, I don't want anything to take that love of garden from me. And um, I, like on days like today, I just love being out here. I love uh, sitting in a chair, even just weeding. It's so peaceful and so therapeutic, and I need that. Thank you all so much for watching me. Um, I never really hardly say this, but please like and subscribe. If you see this video, please subscribe and um, join me on this channel. I'm going to try to get back with it. I've taken a little bit of a breather, but I'm going to try to get back with it and um, keep you updated on what all I've got going on. 
and hopefully as these projects get finished my home place will just become a little more functional for us and a little more enjoyable i know that back porch already has just been a joy to me especially because it's the greatest place that i have to harden off those plants it's working out so good and um so everything's coming together it's just a lot of work and sometimes you kind of have to take a little breather and you kind of have to put your nose to the grind and just get a few things done and then tell somebody about it later so that's kind of what i've been doing but i've been working really hard and i hope everything's going good for you at your places and i wish you the best gardening season ever this is laney at hilltop home place y'all have a wonderful day bye bye